Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about a medial level problem from lead code. The problem name is cinema seat allocation. So as you can see that there is a cinema with n rows of seats as you can see here and in an example from 1 till n all the rows are there and there are 10 seats in each row as you can see here number from 1 till 10. Now given an array reserved seats as you can see in the example there is an array that is given to you which denotes that what is the ith seat that is reserved. So it is given in this let's say a pair which means that the seat located at the third row and eighth column you can say or the eighth seat is actually reserved. So uh, three eight means that the third row eighth seat is booked. Now return the maximum number of four person groups you can assign on the cinema seats. A four person group occupy four adjacent seats in a single row. You just have to tell that how many four person seats you can assign. Like you have let's say four four groups. You have to assign it throughout this whole cinema. Now seats across an aisle. Aisle means that whatever is the you can say the very end of any let's say section is this this is like this seat is an aisle seat this is this seat is an aisle seat okay so aisle is a let's say very corner seat of, of a section so this three four seven and eight are the aisle seats so seats across an aisle are not considered to be adjacent so if you cannot take a let's say a, a four person group like this no oh, sorry you cannot take a four person group like you can just put one person here and three persons here this is not considered for oh, this is three person group like uh, this this is not a four adjacent group okay understand that now but there is one exception so in which you can split a four person group in that case the i'll split a four person group in the middle which means that two person on each side so this is considered good which which you can see here and the second row that you can put two persons on one place of like one position of the let's say uh, one section and two position on the next section but they are completely adjacent by the i this is valid but yeah which i've told you this part this type of sitting arrangement is not valid okay now what you'll actually have to just find out is that given the proper constraints you just have to find out how many four uh, people groups you can fill in this particular uh, cinema hall. Now what you can see is that n is pretty large which means that you cannot just create like you cannot just build the complete uh, rows like this complete matrix of let's say n cross 10 and just fill these addition matrix like the seats and just check out because n is pretty much large. But if n is pretty much large and the total number of seats is 10 to the 4 which is booked okay so what you can do in this scenario is that instead of finding out for all the rows how much position or how many people i can sit i can just find out the values for all the rows which are booked so i have some positions so at max into a four rows can be booked so let's say if all the people sit in every particular different row 10 to a four is a number of touch points we have to do so which means that that i can do very simply in o of n and for all the other rows which are not touched which means that all the row that is completely unfilled completely unreserved so let's take an example in which you can take this let's say the ra last row as the example the very first and the very last row let's say seat of any row is invalid for us because that doesn't give us any benefit i have to somehow fill this set so what you can see is that for this as a row other answer is not three i cannot like uh, have to check that this is one of the options this is one of the options and this is one of the options i don't have to find out options i just have to fill the seats let's say i i just have continuous four people groups that are coming to my let's say uh cinema hall so i just have to find out continuous four sections that i can fill so i can just uh, let's say fill one uh, uh, let's say group of four people here one group of here which eventually just means that for all the rows which are completely unresolved. So let's say I have 10 to about 8 rows. And among them, let's say 100 rows, I have data. Ki some are reserved, some are not, anything. So 10 to about 8 minus 100 are the rows which are completely empty. Completely empty means that completely unresolved. We don't have any data for them, which means that are completely empty. So for every row that is completely unresolved, what I can easily do is I can just make 
two groups of size four easily sit on there. So I can make a group like this, one group like this, one group like this, and I can easily sit them. So what you can easily understand is that 10 to 8 minus 100, all the rows, I can just fill two people, like two groups in there. And for all the 100 rows, which I have data, I can just brute force all of them one by one and just find out how many, uh, let's say, people I can fill or how many groups I can fill in these 100 rows. So all the 10 to 8 minus 100, I directly know the answer. And for all these 100 rows, I can just brute force, brute force, brute force over them, find out the answer and just add that answer in the total answer which I have calculated. So total number of rows, let's say is n and the number of data I have for some, some rows, let's say n, small n. So I, I know that for all these rows, the answer is 2. So 2 into this row is the total answer. And for all the n rows, the small n, which I have the data, I will find out the answer for all of them using brute force and just add the total. And that's the total answer. That's you can see in the total answer as well. 2 into n. n is the total number of rows I have into the rows that I have know the values. I have filled the value. So I will get the answer for all of them into 2. And all the other rows which I have the got the value, I will find out the answer in total. And I will I will add all of them and I will get the total. Okay. That's all the idea that for this particular problem. Now, uh, how can we do this in a very brute force way? How, how we can find out and how we can bundle them up? It's pretty much simple. You have all the seats. You can first sort all the seats by their let's say row so because the first one is the row and the second one is seat you can directly just sort all these rows now all the let's say all the complete array will be sorted such that all the seats which are booked in a particular row will come consecutively adjacent to one another which i'm mentioning is that let's say 2 comma 1 2 comma 5 2 comma 8 then 3 comma 1 3 comma 8 so all of them will be this in this manner in the in the let's say in the sorted array in the sorted reserved array because I will just sort them. So which eventually I just means that all the seats one, five, and eight are booked inside the row two. Then one and eight are booked inside the row three. And I have these rows now. So let's say I can just make simply a array or let's say a vector of size ten and just fill out that I have uh, the first. Uh, position booked, fifth position booked, eighth position booked, and so on. I I just have the complete uh like the complete uh reservation for a particular row. Now I have two options. I uh, either I can fill uh two. So after filling this complete row, whatever reservations I have, I have two options which are: can I book or can I fill two groups of size four in this particular row, or can I fill one group of size four in this particular row? Okay, so just have, I just have written this two function, check two and check one the, on this particular row. So this will just check that whether I can fill a row with two groups of size four or I can fill one group of size four in this particular row. How I can check for, for two groups? For if I want to fill two groups, all the rows or all the, yeah, all the columns, sorry, or let's say all the seats from two second position till nine position should be empty. Okay, and if I want to fill one row, then, or let's say one uh, one uh, complete section of size four, or one group, if I want to book one group, then there are three cases. Either I will book one group like this, or I can one book, book one group like this, or I can book one group like this. So there are three positions. If either all of these four seats are empty, I will just check a for loop over all of them. If all of them are, if either one of them are empty, then I will book a one seat, okay. And uh, uh, that's it. I just have to calculate for all the rows that I have and I just print out also. Okay, that's a complete logic for this particular problem. Let's move on to the code part now. So what we have done is that in this function, we have to first sort all the, let's say, reserve seats. And then this is the row I am on. And then what I'll do is I will iterate over all the, all the rows because all the seats that are adjacent to each other, either they will belong to the same row or not. If they belong to the same row, the last row, this is a, just a variable that will tell me what is the last index. So let's say I am on the row two. So all the, let's say, pairs that are having the row as two, I will mark it inside the same, let's say, row that I have. So I will make a vector that is, let's say, rows, or you can just mark it as A. And then I will fill all of them, whatever row I have with one, which means that that is resolved. Now, whenever I find out a switch, which means that I have, let's say, two one booked, two four booked, two eight booked. Then I have a let's say the next pair is three eight. Whenever I find out a new 
pair, which means that which belongs to a new row. So which means that this row is completed. All the reservations in this row is completed. So if the if all the reservations in this row is completed, I have the complete visualization of how this row is looking like. I will increment the row that I have found at the look for one row, increment the row. Then I will check that if this is the row, can I fill two groups? Can I fill one group? If I can fill, I can I just find the answer. And now I have to move to the next row. So if I want to and I because the next row is started, 3, 8. So if I go to the next row, I will make my row array that will or the row vector, whatever you can say, which is storing out the complete, uh, you can say uh, the uh, the complete uh, uh, like the representation of the row that will I will make it zero, which means that I will start from a new row all initialized to zero and I will mark because I've taken this particular, uh, you can say pair. So I will mark this pair as booked inside the row and I will mark the last, which means that now I am on this row. So I will mark this variable that is last as uh, this particular row value that is zero which means that all the now all the new pairs after this will be in the row three if they are in the row three i will update them if they are not in the row three i will now have the complete view of the row three i will check it out now how this check one and check two function works let's take a look at that so this check two function we just iterate over from all the so i this is of indexed from one till ten but i have stored in from index zero to nine so i will move from index let's say one to eight if all of them are empty which means that all of them are let's say uh if you can say if any one of them is one which means that it is already filled i cannot fill two groups here but if if any one of them is one then i will return false if and all of them are empty which means that all of them are zero i will return true which means that i can fill two groups here and to check if i can fill one group i have three cases which i've told you i i will make a total of zero and i will check out from this position to this position that is index 3 to index 6 if all of them are 0 increment the count if the increment is 4 which means that all of them are let's say empty i will return true the next case is just checking from this to this and the other one is checking from this to this if any one of them turns out to be let's say true the answer is true that i have one of the options in which i can fill a group of size 4 in this particular row if not i will return uh, let's say like false okay that is the complete logic and the code part for this particular problem as well yeah, I will just scroll it one more slowly so you can just take a look at this once again. And if you still have any doubts, you can mention in the inbox of this particular video. I will see you in the next week coding and bye.